taxpayers may have been shortchanged, the figure of a billion pounds, but postal workers got almost three and a half thousand free shares each in the privatisation. They've done well. The postal workers were given shares um, to, you know, as, as an attempt to buy them off. When we polled our members, were they were in favour of the privatisation, they were against it. The fact is, it, here, as uh, Vince Cable says, it's all about hindsight. What's clear is Vince Cable never had foresight. He lost the British public a billion pounds. If you were a postal worker and you lost an important package, you know, you faced the prospect of the sack. Vince Cable has got an opinion on everything, but he doesn't take responsibility for anything. All right, we'll come to the issue of hindsight in just a moment. I'll let Adam pick up on that. But postal workers have done well, haven't they? I mean, if you calculate how much they would get if they traded in those shares, they'd make a tidy sum of around £5,000. And there can't be many of your postal workers who will sit there now and say, that was a bad deal. I think they will. I think if you really? ask, po I think if you ask postal workers, well, out of uh, 150,000 Royal Mail workers, Billy mm. Hayes, only 368 turned the shares down. They were given the share. That's why I made the point, Joe. They didn't have a choice. They were given the share. They didn't. They didn't have to uh, do anything. The shares were put in the pay packs, as, as it were. The fact of the matter is, the postal workers were against the sale of Royal Mail, as was the British public. The poll in the Sunday Times the week before the sale, 60% of the British public from all parties opposed to the sale of Royal Mail. Vince Cable made a botched sale. He panicked, he didn't have the foresight, and now he's trying to blame everybody else and accept responsibility for nothing. It does look a bit of a disaster for taxpayers if a committee of MPs has said, actually, it was undersold by a billion pounds because of fear of failure. I'm not sure at all. I think this has been quite a great success for the employees, for people, the ordinary people who bought the shares, and for taxpayers. Remember, this is £2 billion that taxpayers have got now, which they otherwise wouldn't have. And as the, the National Order Office says, now taxpayers are no longer liable for the losses that Royal Mail may or may not make. So if you, if you look back at what, what the Royal Mail was doing in, in the past, so yes, they're making profits now, but it being in the market is a great success after so many decades of trying to do that. Everyone from Michael Heseltine to Peter Mandelson is trying to do this, and finally we've been, the government's been able to do this. So, and the ordinary people who, who bought these shares, many of them have never bought shares before. These are not, you know, these are average people across the country who benefited from this. All right, if you are setting the case of saying it was a successful thing to do, but if you just look at the figures, the share offer price at sale was 330 pence. The prices rose as high as 618 pence. How did he get it so wrong in terms of where to price it? So the share price is essentially a reflection of expectations of future earnings. So partly it's because people, the, the fact that so many of the employees decided to accept, nine, more than 99% of the employees chose to accept uh, these shares, that means that less likely to go on strike action, more likely to be, to be a more stable organisation. So investors see that and they think, actually, yeah, maybe this is a better bet and it, it's, it's a, good a, a good opportunity to invest. But also, the fact that the share price has gone up is not necessarily a bad thing at all. It means that the 700,000 people, 700,000 across the country, are, are benefiting from this. These are not institutional investors. These are people you know, sort of on average incomes who are benefiting this. And uh, Billy Hayes, what do you say to that? I mean, those I, figures, I, just, I mean, you can say, I know you said hindsight's a wonderful thing, um, but actually, could you or I have estimated how much we could have got um, for selling off Royal Mail? And the figures that have just been given by Adam shows that long term, it could be very successful. Well, I'm not a city banker and I'm not a city institution. On the one hand, advising uh, the government mm. on the sale, and then another section of my company making a profit on the sale. But the fact remains is I think it's really odd, Adam. I don't know if you run a business, but if I had something for sale that was worth three billion and I sold it for two billion, and then I argue, I mean, that's really good for me because I made two billion. But it was but, sold. But, the but point the is there was a doubt as to whether you could actually have sold yeah, it in absolutely. the first place. But, yeah, absolutely. But as has been said before, it was almost free money, this. The fact of the matter is the company was worth a lot more than it was sold for. The city institutions got it wrong. 24 times oversubscribed, uh, and, 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 and the great British public lost a billion pounds. So it's so important to the point you made earlier, the companies which were advising the, company, the, the, the government and the companies which sold them. So you're saying that somehow there's some sort of corporate fraud there. So actually that's well, quite... that was a, the indication that there was a big well, conflict of so, interest. So, so that, that's, that's quite, a big, that's quite a big allegation, actually. I don't know actually. whether there was corporate so, I don't know. I'm not... I'm, I'm not a bit, but it just seems a bit odd to me that a company on the one hand is advising on the sale, so, I mean, another you, part of the company is benefiting from the sale. Do you actually have any... And then, no, and the, the com select committee say there wasn't, but I think the ordinary... But you think there was? No, I think the ordinary person in the street wouldn't understand somebody who was advising on a sale 
and somebody was benefiting from the sale, the same organisation. It's what? so wrong for you to say that because this is normal practice. There are Chinese mm -hmm. firewalls. So, why, so why, if you're saying why that why let's have, let's have okay. if you're saying that they've broken Chinese firewalls and you're saying they've committed mass corporate fraud, no, what's so, the advice no, bad? No, no, what I'm, no, what I'm so, saying. Well, what I'm saying is this: if there wasn't a problem, why is Vince Cable asked Paul Miners to come in and look at what happened on the sale? Everybody recognised the sale was botched. There's no yeah. getting the, the Well, not same. everybody does, well, do they? Well, because okay. clearly Adam doesn't. Oh, well, okay. The National Audit Office. The National Audit Office. The Biz Select Committee. So Vince Cable himself is now looking at the sale. And that is a little bit like, that is a little All bit right. like judging your own homework. But the fact of the matter is, a billion pounds All right. went adrift. Well, let's go, let, let, let's ask Adam, actually, about also the pension liability. I mean, that had to be put onto the taxpayer too in order for it to be sold. That's not great for the taxpayer either. Not in the long term, but if it meant that the, so it's quite, obviously you don't want, you wouldn't, that's not necessarily desirable, but it, no. had to be, it had to be done in order to get the, the Royal Mail into the market. And uh, it's, it's a, I guess, a, a necessary cost because the benefit of having the Royal Mail in the market in terms of the, the innovation, the, the, the freedom that it gives it now, and the people who benefit from investing it and, and the, the, employ the employees, all of that is worthwhile in the long term. Just yes. very, very finally, very briefly, sorry, we've only got a few seconds. You, you said that selling off the Royal Mail would destroy the Postal Service, has it? Well, look what's happened to Post Office Councils today. There's problems with Post Office Councils. I think in the long term it's going to cause major problems. We're but it already, hasn't done so now, has we're it? Already, well, it? Royal Mail are also talking now about the Universal Service, the threat to Universal Service. The fact of the matter is, Vince Cable should be sacked. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you both very much.